It is time for final accuse. Most importantly, I've made a save, so uh hope I get it right the first time, huh? Inspector. I know who killed Halcyon Helen. I've been waiting for this. Tell me, Inspector, who killed Halcyon Helm? Uh... Yeah, I pretty much ruled out all the- You did! I beg your pardon. You think I killed Halcyon Helen? I've got proof. There's nothing to prove. I don't understand. Are you trying to make a mockery of justice, or are you really this incompetent? I expect you to deliver the name of Helen's killer. I expect you to deliver results, Inspector. And if you can't withstand the pressure, then I expect you to resign. We're done. Your services are no longer necessary. Yeah, asshole, because I solved the murder. It was you. Keep being flippant with me. See how far it'll get you. You're convinced I murdered Halcyon Helen. Fine. Show me some evidence. <laughs> no, I forgot something. <laughs> this entire investigation's a farce. I'm done playing along. If you have no proof, then you have no case. And I have no further use for you. Wait, don't move a muscle. Someone's just tripped my alarm. And my security defenses. And killed my patrols. Yeah, the worms. The is under attack. Someone's after me, Inspector. I need you over here right now. You just said you had no use for me. Weren't you about to kill me? Someone's trying to kill you. Well, shit, don't let me get in their way. No, I don't think it's me they want. They're after what I'm protecting. Damn it. Someone's interfering with my transmission. Can you read the... Th So, guys, should we help him out, or...? Whoever the real killer is, I got a feeling they're going after Mr. Ludovico. We need to catch up to him. Fast. I guess, if we have to. Getting kind of tired of kicking my heels up in the penthouse all day. Hmm. All right. I got nothing going on. We should definitely go. As for helping him, maybe we take the wait-and-see approach? From the depths of Terra 2 to the heights of Eridanos. There's no mess that your SAM unit can't unstick, unclog, or unsully. Think of this as an opportunity to teach Mr. Ludovico the importance of compassion. <laughs> All right. It might be time for a little bit of a remix. What floor would you like to visit? Let's uh, get out of here. And maybe I'll bring you guys along. Shit, there we go. Ah, but their equipment's gonna be bad. Dang it. Mm, I can figure it out. But yeah, we have we have six party members and only two DLCs. We have a few levels left to get. You already got the bonus threat, yep. Bonus range damage damage is good. Bonus armor rating. And then Sam's leveling. Let's see. Close range? No. Long range? Shoot people. Less reputation loss? Bonus range damage. More companion ability damage. Always ranged. Get rid of that silly shit. Flamethrower 2. Machine gun.
all in spacer's choice. 2500 or something. But aren't the LMG Mark III supposed to be two? I guess that's more. It'll have to be enough. How about armor? 108, holy shit. I'll keep you going for a bit. 54. Yeah, that should be fine. Save and go. So it does. Oh, am I gonna get to go inside one of the places that was locked up before? Oh, there's no fast travel over there. Probably for this part when it goes under attack. So we're not quite done yet. Honestly, it was it was like an ass pull accusation, but like I did kind of rule out some of these people. Two of them are pretty are like like the, the two people that actually harmed Halcyon Helen directly via different forms of poisoning. Both of them seem like they didn't actually kill her. And they've admitted to those parts. The other two characters haven't actually confessed to anything, but don't seem like they killed her. Birdie does just actually seem pretty dumb, and seems to be genuinely trying to learn more about what happened. In a not bluffing kind of way. So, yeah, the, the main the main guy's uh, business rival might be the most likely candidate. But narratively, it does seem like his best incentive was introduced after she was already dead, which really fucks that up. So the main dude, Ludovico, being responsible seems relatively likely. Sup? Oh, they exploded. Bye. I just wanted to make you smile. The question is why the person that's doing it is using her weapon still. That's like a confusing sign to use. Hey, it's this thing that was closed before. Now we get to go inside. Hey guys. I wondered about this. I like I kept It's funny. In, like I I don't know if I actually said it, but I kept having moments throughout the whole thing where things kept pointing at Helen and I'm like, but that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing here? Because there's obviously the fact that people are just being killed by her weapon all over the place, so that's like, what? why is that happening? What's going on there? But then there's the fact that, uh... People kept behaving like somebody from the serials would, and she was apparently doing some, like, serious investigation and so on. And going all over the, uh... The place, but then, like, there's parts where, like, the person who... The person who killed the doctor in particular escaped in like an adventure kind of way and it's like why are they behaving that way and i partly thought it was maybe halcyon helen or it might have been her co-star who was also in those serials because like why are they acting like they're in the serials <laughs> that's strange 
But, the, but then I would remember I literally saw her dead on the ground and she was inspected by a coroner and then she was again on table later. So it's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, so what is this? Did you fake your death somehow? Or is there more than one of you? Are you a clone or a twin? Because we're that it's that kind of cheesy. Can we take a step back and not blow up any buildings while I'm still in them? Well, that's gonna depend on whether or not you're on my side. Don't listen to her. How can you possibly trust the word of someone who lacks the decency to stay dead? You were never my target, Inspector. I've no intention of killing you unless you stand in my way. I'm not going anywhere till I get an explanation. Brace yourself, Inspector. You're about to learn the biggest secret in the Aetherwave industry. Halcyon Helen was never one person. I shared this role with my twin sister. Belinda. Malfunction! Comprehension module is imminent for overload! Two people inhabiting the same life. Existentially challenging. Philosophically speaking. My condolences. Must feel like you literally lost part of yourself. Belinda and I were the best kept secret in the business. Nobody could tell us apart. And certainly not a peevish, petty, miserable little worm like Quentin Ludovico. So when I discovered the truth, when I realized what Ludovico was about to unleash on this colony, Belinda paid the price. So he was hatching the cons he she was cracking the mystery. And he thought me investigating the entire place was a good idea? Like, I'm- I- I- I so heavily uncovered exactly what she's- was going after. Admit- Administrator Ludovico? <gasps> a murderer and a coward? Why, I never- Call me a murderer all you like, Inspector. But I'm no coward. I bloodied my hands to save this colony. I'd do it again. If it means defending Halcyon's future, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Tell the truth, Ludovico. There's nothing safe about Spectrum Brown. You want to infest this entire colony with those disgusting parasites. They're not parasites. These creatures are symbiotic life forms. They belong to the highest order of life form, capable of living in perfect harmony with humanity. The symbiotes evoke a feeling of joy in their host. A bliss so pure, so profound, as to render the most exquisite recreational substance obsolete. Oh, don't you see, Inspector? I want to bring joy back to Halcyon. I want this colony to smile again. He's definitely already infected, isn't he? They're not symbiotes. I've seen the way the infected behave. A host only turns violent if they're carrying too many symbiotes, or if they see you as a threat. In its natural state, the relationship between symbiote and host is perfectly harmless. Listen to me. I never wanted to take a life, but I had no choice. I couldn't let anyone destroy this colony's only chance at real happiness. But what about Helen? What about all the innocent people she's killed? No one I crossed off was innocent. That's definitely not real happiness. But also... It's naturally harmless. You, they only attack you if there's too many symbiotes in the bot. How the f You're putting it in a product. You expect everyone to just have one? Especially when the first one made them feel that good? Like, too many symbiotes is gonna happen, quote-unquote, naturally all the time. That was you in the labs. You killed Dr. Blossom. Have you met Dr. Blossom? She was practically a reptile. A cold-blooded psychopath who toyed with human lives in the name of scientific advancement. Leora Blossom wasn't a person. She was a weapon in Ludovico's arsenal. You call it murder? I call it disarming my enemy. I know you killed the Rangers mascot. The mascot was a spy working for Ludovico. He was ordered to keep an eye on Belinda and I, and report back to his master. You're being paranoid. I barely knew the fellow. Don't try to deny it. Anywhere Belinda and I went, that mascot was there just 
watching us with those cold, dead eyes. I'm pretty sure he wasn't working for the administrator. He was a Rizzo's employee. He belonged to Ludovico's horrible little family of grinning idiots. Dr. Leora Blossom, Maria Keen, that slack wit of a mascot. They were standing between me and Ludovico, so I did what I had to do. I went through them. You killed Constable Keen? She was on your side. She was on Ludovico's side. When she realized I was alive, she refused to stay silent. I gave Maria a chance. I told her about Belinda. I asked for her help, but she turned me down. She was honor-bound to report me to Ludovico. Maria had a duty to her company, and I had a duty to Belinda. We both did what we had to. But in the end, I was the faster shot. I've heard enough. You know what you need to do. Help me avenge Belinda. Help me put a stop to this. Don't listen to her. Listen to me. Throw in with Helen and you destroy Halcyon's only chance at real happiness. Think of the future, Inspector. A lifetime of bliss and joy for every colonist in Halcyon. We can make that happen. This has never this has never been a more obvious choice. Like what the fuck? He's nuts. I'm helping you, Helen, but once we get out of here, I expect answers. It's a deal. A far better choice than Ludovico, though Ms. Bellamy does seem a bit obsessed. But then again, some of us may have had a few issues with that ourselves. We don't have a lot of time. We need to get out of here. Uh-uh, not so fast. I've sealed the bulkhead doors. You're staying right where you are. I'm sorry to do this to you, Inspector. Truly, I am. If it's any consolation, Helen has brought some remarkably powerful explosives. Your death should be instantaneous. Goodbye, Inspector. Helen, we won't meet again. Damn it. He sealed us in, but I think I know another way out. Follow me and stay close. Let's move. Time to go. Chaos mode, okay. Hit follow me, even though we're not in the same room yet. They gotta keep her behind glass. Oh, I don't- oh, my armor- my weapons are maybe breaking. It's an- it's just like Metroid, what an action escape. Oop, I went the wrong way. Oop, I went the wrong way. Hello, 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 hello. What's the frame rate on these? It's hard to hear what she's saying. It's c coming out of somewhere. Nice work, Inspector. We may have put a stop to Ludovico's operations, but he's still at large. He's probably gone into hiding, so we're going to root him out. What's the plan? This entire complex has been exposed to those parasites. Law only knows how many they've infected. Most of them won't even know they're carrying a parasite inside of them. If they're showing symptoms, it's probably already too late. Boundless energy, insufferable joy, an almost saccharine attitude of optimism. Then just like that, parasites bursting out of their bodies, fat and wriggling with vital energy. There must be some kind of pesticide, benign to humans, lethal to parasites. <laughs> You're a step ahead of me, Inspector. An airborne pesticide of some kind. I think you may be onto something. Let's meet back at your penthouse. We'll ready our next move. I'll meet you there. Or hold on, I have questions, apparently. Not here. In private, back at the penthouse. Also, I rather like the ambiance there. See you soon, Inspector. Why would we go to the penthouse? The guy who runs this place is trying to kill us. Why would we go back to the building... That's the, the room at the top of the building he controls. What a stupid plan. Okay, sure. Let's go back to where my party is. Oh no, the doors are closed and he's gassing us with poison gas. Arg. I do have some mixed feelings about the fact that this 
They sent me on a Paradise Killer style island adventure where I non-linearly walk around and investigate all these clues to find out what's going on. And in the process, ultimately, like, I don't think what you do matters? Like, you can basically uncover the worm thing in advance. Like, I, I knew what was going on, more or less. But you're supposed to make this accusation at one of these people. And ultimately, I, I kind of get the feeling that no matter what you do, you just end up having... you, go, you Like, I think the set piece just happens the same way, basically. It's like, Ludovico's under attack, you go over here, you encounter Halcyon Helen, and now this part of the story happens where I guess you maybe can side with him or her. But... I don't think your investigation necessarily mattered up until now. Like it was, there it was literally all red herrings. So it's it's like, mm. also the 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 usual like Fallout New Vegas approach of like having so much looting and walking around, and exploring and talking and uh, and fighting and so on, really reduces how much time is spent actually talking to people. So like I think compared to something like Paradise Killer, there's a lower like plot point density. It kind of got highlighted to me when I went back and I looked at all the evidence we had gotten over the course of like 10 hours of gameplay. And it just wasn't that compelling or dense. Like it was like, oh, this is kind of neat, but it's like not that, it's not that involved. Like there's very, there's not that much you've learned about each of the individual characters. So it kind of feels a bit shallow compared to a game like that. And they kind of pad it out with stuff like combat, making the game much longer. It's strange. When you walk through that door, I half expected to see Belinda. Belinda and I practically shared a life. Losing her feels like losing a limb. She's conspicuous by her absence. I'm sorry. This must be difficult for you. I appreciate the sympathy, Inspector. Thank you. I'll appreciate your help even more. We shut down Ludovico's distillation plant, but he's not going to sit idly by. If he can't use Spectrum Brown to infect the colony, he'll resort to some kind of backup plan. I stole this formula from Dr. Blossom, a failed prototype of Spectrum Brown. Look at this. The prototype had the opposite effect, and actually made you immune to the parasites. So your immune system could destroy the parasites before the larval stage. Precisely. I see we're in your wheelhouse, Inspector. Or do you prefer doctor? We're going to need two ingredients. A sample of essence of Sprat and one intact pod of parasite eggs. Cedric's warehouse in the Piraeus spaceport almost certainly carries a batch of Sprat essence. As for the pod, I'd check the wilderness reserve if I were you. Oh, you mean the Sprat Nucleans. They're commonly used in medical experiments. I'm glad one of us is an expert. Most of what I know is based on Dr. Blossom's notes. Here's what I understand. Sprats have an adaptive immune system. They don't suffer from the diseases and parasites they carry. It's one reason why you'll see them in every corner of the colony. Dr. Blossom experimented with Sprats and accidentally discovered a way to become immune to the parasites. That's probably when she decided to switch to human testing. I should be able to synthesize an effective anti-parasitic. You're a scientist and an inspector? You really are full of surprises. I borrowed a centrifuge from the research lab. Use the ingredients to synthesize an anti-parasitic. Easy enough. I'm glad I could count on your expertise. Once you're finished, head to the pilot house. We'll hijack the control system and disperse the cure into the atmosphere. That should kill off most of the parasites. Cedric's gonna want a piece of Ludovico. I can recruit his help. I like the way you think, Inspector. We could use another ally. I know, Cedric. There's nothing he wants more than a chance to eliminate Ludovico. We could use him on our side. Best of luck, Inspector. I'm counting on you. Granted, he did want to kill you. I wanted to ask you about Belinda. I'm not accustomed to talking about Belinda. 
But I'm also not accustomed to the kind of sympathy you showed me earlier. So I'll make an exception for you. Belinda and I shared the role of Helen, but she was also the only person who knew the real me. To the rest of the colony, I'm Halcyon Helen, but to my sister, I'm... I was just Ruth. I could be myself around Belinda, and she could be herself around me. She was my only sister, but she was also my only friend. People know you're Ruth Bellamy. Was it hard for Belinda to keep herself secret? No. Belinda enjoyed the secrecy. She could slip into the role of Halcyon Helen, attend social events on my behalf, perform a few stunts, deliver a few lines. And then, when she grew tired of all the people and all the attention, all she had to do was slip out of the role and be my sister again. She was the secret twin. She had a comfortable life in the shadows, an easier life. I made sure of that. That's so much to keep track of, though, like all the social bonds and interactions and like trying to maintain the continuity and have, like pretending you forgot things, I guess. An easier life in Byzantium while the rest of the colony starves to death. Do you really expect me to apologize for my success? <laughs> because let me tell you something. If you ask a Byzantine to show compassion for the working class, you are asking to be lied to. Besides, Belinda and I spent our lives giving the workers of Halcyon hours of entertainment to help them escape the humdrum routine of their daily lives. Isn't that enough? No. One, asking a Byzantian to care about the working class, asking them to lie, you're telling on yourself. You're talking about yourself there. Also, you make propaganda for the corporations. It's it's barely entertainment in its own sake. I've every single time I've heard any hint of what this stuff is, it's always blatant propaganda to maintain this world. Like you make the world worse. Like I can get swept up in the adventure for a few minutes of like, oh man, the conspiracy and what's going on here, but like you are not a positive figure in this universe even remotely. Jesus. Not even a little. It's going to have to be enough. There isn't much more I can do. Well, other than help you save Halcyon from an infestation of mind-controlling parasites. So is there anything else you wanted to ask me? You really are only good in the context of, like, we happen to be dealing with someone who thinks infecting the world with mind, with mind parasites is good, and we, we agree to stop that. Like... That's it. You killed innocent people. Did you really think I'd be okay with that? Yes, Inspector. I did. Leora Blossom and Maria Keane were on Ludovico's side. They chose to stand between me and my sister's killer. I had to cross them off. What exactly happened between you and Constable Keane? Would you believe me if I said I gave the Constable a chance? I spoke to her in her office. I told her everything. Belinda, Ludovico, the parasites, all of it. Maria said I was guilty of corporate sabotage and that she had a duty to report me. She told me how sorry she was, and I told her the same thing. And then I shot her. Maria was defending my sister's killer. If someone murdered one of your crew in cold blood, what would you do? Things get a little messy when the fact that everyone's so fucking indoctrinated and so loyal and so, like, a mess for their corporations is because of the media that they grew up on that you produce that makes them that way. Like, you help. You're part of the reason that Keen would uh, turn you in. <laughs> You're part... Ah. I don't think she has an even, even a hint of understanding that that's what she did. That, that like, she's part of why people are like her, like Keen in the first place. It doesn't matter. You're a murderer and nothing's gonna change that. I can't quite figure you out. 
You've been sympathetic about Belinda's murder, but condemn me for avenging her. It's not it that matter. deep. I don't have anything to prove to you. Was there anything else you wanted, or shall we move on? It's not that deep to be sympathetic over someone dying and then also condemning uh, murder, even in revenge. It's, it's not. It's not that hard of a concept, honestly. Birdie was carrying this data pad. I think it's yours. Yes, this is mine. I'd kept notes on everything I suspected, everything I'd discovered. It's all here, all in code. Belinda and I. We had a secret way of communicating. Words and phrases that had a special meaning to us. Numbers and dates that were only important to the two of us. Only two people in the universe knew that language. Here. That's gracious of you. I know you think I'm a cold-hearted murderer, so I'm a little surprised. What exactly happened on the night of the murder? You don't know how many times I relived this moment in my mind. I discovered what Ludovico was up to when I toured the orchards. I threatened to expose his plan. Ludovico decided to eliminate me. He programmed Burbage 3001 to fire on his command and disabled the security cameras in the ballroom. Only, he didn't know about Belinda. I'm sure he thought it was my skull he caved in with a bottle of Spectrum Brown. Burbage covered his blow with the plasma shot, and then Ludovico wiped his memory. Yeah, then he hired me to pin the murder on someone else. I don't think he expected you to be so competent. In the end, hiring you may have been his undoing. I went after Leora Blossom, and you were just one step behind me. I programmed an automech to steal some explosives from Cedric, but you weren't far behind. You were always hot on my heels, one step behind and catching up. I realized I'd have to throw in with you or eliminate you. You would have lost that fight. <laughs> I like your confidence. Take that with you when you hunt down Ludovico. I want to hear the whole story. Tell me what happened. It's a long story, Inspector. Yeah, I know. This is the 11th hour of it. I've got time. It was supposed to be just another marketing job. Rizzo's wanted Halcyon Helen to be the face of Spectrum Brown. Some hideous concoction served with a dead parasite. All we had to do was spend a few weeks on Eridanos. Shake some hands, sign a few autographs, drink a bottle of Spectrum Brown in front of a camera, and try to smile. Belinda didn't want to go. But... I wanted a change of scenery. In any case, we couldn't possibly say no. Why didn't Belinda want to go? Belinda always hated endorsement deals. They felt cheap to her. Inauthentic. She always believed her first priority was to our fans, and not the company that bought us out. I've got bad news about all the art you create, if you think that. You think... Th Endorsement deals are crossing the line, but the propaganda is fine. What are these? What are these priorities? I guess it just means you're a true believer, so you don't question any of that stuff, and you just think that's just the reality that you're creating right there. I didn't know Halcyon Helen was company property. Belinda and I are Halcyon Helen. Halcyon Helen is a creative property owned by whatever company sponsors our latest picture. Rizzo's finance the majority of Terror on Monarch, which means they currently own 51% of Halcyon Helen. We were required by law to take the job. And here I was hoping one thing on this colony wasn't bought and paid for. <laughs> Beware of hope. It's a dangerous emotion and will disappoint you in the end. Belinda and I arrived on Eridanos and played our usual game of trading places. We were practically flawless. Even Ludovico didn't know about us. Belinda was unhappy for the first few days. But then she met Bertie Holcomb. Bertie treated her like a human being and not just an Aetherwave icon. They were just about perfect. 
she met Bertie Holcomb here? I thought they were like an, an ongoing thing for a while, not this just this trip or something. Huh. Also, how do they get from place to place? Like, like it'd be a bit conspicuous. There's like two tickets for every flight and like two of them are getting on the ship. Like, how do they hide that every time? Does one of them hide in the, in the luggage? Except his temper problem, I found the re the ruined picnic. Bertie has a dreadful temper. I was worried about Belinda for a while, but you know, she told me he'd never lay a finger on her, and I took her at her word. Bertie wasn't the person I should have kept an eye on. It was Ludovico. I had a feeling Ludovico was hiding something. Belinda stayed busy socializing with the celebrities around the complex. That gave me some time to do a little digging. I heard you insisted on a tour of the labs. I saw everything. The test subjects, the parasites. Spectrum Brown was never safe to drink. Those harmless dead parasites at the bottom of every bottle. They were just dormant. They would have sold out in a month. This colony loves novelty. They'll eat up any new product we toss their way. A new cereal, a new Spectrum flavor. Ludovico knows that. From Emerald Vale to Byzantium. A parasite in every brain and a grin on every face. Every last one of us trapped behind a mask of joy. That's what Ludovico wants. Halcyon almost turned into a giant fallout vault. Ludovico realized what you were up to. He thought you'd expose his plans. <sighs> I was careless. I was risking Belinda's life every step of the way and I never even realized. My regrets are my own to bear, but for what it's worth, thank you. Was there something else you wanted to talk about? Goodbye. Well, let's see what we can get up to, because apparently we are not done. Collect an egg pot, an essence of Sprat, recruit Cedric, who wants to kill her, which is maybe an iffy call, but also bleh. Alright, and we got a new party I'm using for this chunk of the story, I guess. Which I thought was just the finale, but there's going to be more to it. Let's get outside with my dudes. The robot's probably a better tank anyway. Because <laughs> he's part tank. Or something. There are a lot of things to say. Now they just stare ahead. Or ever. Why do you teleport me outside? You know I mean inside. I have so little reason to teleport right outside. Be a better you with Adrian time. Oh god, don't do that, please. Bad call. Oh. Well, that's not a good sign. Oh, well. How is he? Hmm. I feel like these enemies damage the storytelling of this mission. Like, I keep talking about how, like, no one's talking about the fact that there's just hordes of people attacking me all the time that are just hosts losing their minds. Like, that's just, like, a lot. Like, every part of, of Outer Worlds seems to have, like, a world-breaking, too-many-enemies problem. And this is like one of the most severe ones in a while, where it's like, there there are so many people dying of this parasite right in front of me, in the open, every time I go anywhere. And like, how am I supposed to believe that this isn't a thing that everyone's freaking out about all the time? Like, almost nobody will talk about it. I have to like, uncover it as a conspiracy just in order to talk about one specific, about it with one specific person. But it's like, it's happening everywhere. What? Like, sometimes someone talks about it in, like, hushed tones, and that's it, but, like, it's everywhere. We're running out of, like, living people in this entire colony at this point, because of how severe it's getting. Like, at this point, they're, they, they, they act, that guy disintegrated. 
They act like and are as common as Bioshock splicers. And in Bioshock, the splicers were like the plot and setting of the game. Whereas in here, it's like a weird thing that no one acknowledges. Almost like they're fucking gaslighting me or something. This entire fucking depart everything this is everybody it's everybody. What the fuck? <laughs> this is so bizarre. Like I could keep getting this far and no one's reacting to it at any point. It's so weird how severely far things have gotten. But among other things, it breaks the I feel like it breaks a few things here. Like one, the mystery would have gone better, I feel like, if there was just a few people that you talk to that are really creepy and infected in like the in like the Purpleberry area and maybe here and there elsewhere. And like you're like, what the fuck is up with that? And that'd be like a, a data point. But they're everywhere. They're fucking everywhere. They're most of the enemies of this DLC are hosts. And then you're supposed to think that this guy believes this is gonna work out? Like I guess he just has to be himself infected and completely un un deranged, which makes him a boring villain because it means he's already completely insane, as opposed to doing anything oh, for reasons. How'd you get in here alive? You are alive, yeah? And not a one of them? No, you look clean. Uh, good. You'd better get inside with the others. The name Slug Security is a little funny in its irony, obviously, but like, you want him to be a villain that genuinely thinks. That what he's doing, like that he, you wanted, you wanted to be a villain that thinks he's genuinely right about what he's doing, because then it's a character that has like motivation and reasoning, and then he can turn out to be wrong because it's too far and too much of a bad idea. But like these characters are just like, like they're literally like, based on their naming, you can tell that some of these guys are apparently going to explode from how many worms are in them. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, they don't even get to live with the parasites. They lose their minds and eventually rupture and shit. Like, that's distressing. They, they're not just mind control slugs, like, from Futurama or whatever. It's so far beyond that, that, like, it's incomprehensible that he would ever think this was a good idea unless he himself was already infected. In which case, he's just an insane person, and then it's just boring, because he doesn't really have, need character motivation or to make sense, because he's crazy! And it's like some Sherlock shit. We're like, oh, these characters are crazy. That means we don't have to, like, write them anymore. Like, they, they just went too far with how many of these guys are around. You also start to really wonder about the body count. Like, how the fuck are there so many more people to get killed by this system? You gotta be running out at some point. But it's deeply ironic that they're called slug workers. Hey, look, giant, uh, sprats. I'm sure we can use those. If I switch to the sprat objective, they might even be around here. Inspector, you made it. Well done. I'm afraid you may find the spaceport is, at the moment, less hospitable than usual. My apologies. Regardless, you must have some purpose here. Do tell. Little Vico's behind everything. Will you help me take him down? Oh, my. You mean Lou was up to no good this whole time? It gets worse. He wants to infect all of the colony with the slugs. It's an ambitious plan, I'll give him that. But tell me, why should I help you, Inspector? Because thing I just said. <laughs> Architect's balls. Because I'm the sprat fucking inspector, damn it. Could I encourage you to pause and take a deep breath? I can see this has all been very stressful for you. You can expect slug support. I'll arrange for my agents to meet you at the distillation station. Tell them to bring their best weapons and any personal issues they'd like to work out through violence. I'll do that. I think one of our checkpoint guards is going through a divorce. As thrilled as I am to assist you in taking down Lou, we have barricaded ourselves in here for a reason. I imagine you have a plan for getting out of the spaceport safely? Hey, you just shoot all the thingies. Wee. <laughs> I'm going to disperse an anti-parasitic. It's almost ready. Are you really? 
Inspector, you are a marvel. Excellent work. I'll admit, I'm awfully fond of my agents. To see them restored will be a great weight off my soul. Thank you. Ah, uh, I mean, they won't be restored according to what we said earlier. We said that it'll make the body fight them off in the larval state, which they're not in right now if they're already crazy. So I, don't, I think those people are fucked. That anti-parasitic I mentioned, I need Essence of Sprat for it. Coincidentally enough, Slug can supply you with Essence of Sprat. Ella Tinsley, the warehouse foreman, you remember her? There's a package on the desk in her office. You'll find the Essence of Sprat you need in there. Who ordered Essence of Sprat, anyway? Oh, I wouldn't like to say. A customer supplier confidentiality and all that. Now then, is there anything else I can do for you while you're here? What happened here? Whew, whatever it was, it happened quickly. Like a wave sweeping across the shore. We were overrun. Survivors are still trickling in. We've put out a call to slug agents not at the docks to keep their distance. With the warehouse's stores, slug could hold out here for weeks, easily. Possibly months. That's all for now. I guess I technically didn't mention that Halcy and Helen's alive, funnily enough. Oh well. Look at all the little rubits. Is she alive at this point? Rats are the number one spreader of Viles disease, and as such are some of the most reviled creatures in the Halcyon system. Got a Sprat problem? Sam is licensed to kill. Literally. More, more like reviled disease. <laughs> is it all one object? Okay, so we're looking for the egg pod. And then I guess we're... Yeah, that's it. We're almost there already. Hey, keep this door closed. You never know what might come out. Will the depravity never cease? Oh yeah, the Iconoclasts. The people that are more right, but I think I remember there was something wrong with them. But it's been a while, and they have not come up in these DLCs, so I remember not. Where's my object? Oh. Ah, I gotta get out of here myself. We're going back to the wilderness. Don't explode at me, it's rude. There's no reason to fight. I completely capped out on equipment early last DLC, so loot is useless to me, and I don't level up anymore. So they are just spam enemies at this point. 36 is a weird level cap. They must have done something like, every DLC has three levels to the cap or something like that. That's like. I feel like that's what, like, the Fallout games did or something. Because they made two, they ended up with a weird number. The irony is I think everyone in here is safe. So she... It's like stuck clock right twice a day situation. Like, she sa she did save the lives of everyone in her weird cult. But not because of any of the things she does are good, but just because everyone else just happened to get infected by this thing and they didn't happen to get here. Except that's not quite true because this basement was full of enemies, so... I don't know. Dumb luck, I guess. I mean, it would have been either way. But even dumber luck. Give me elevator chatter. Talk God with the robot. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh. Back to the USGS but not US part. Hello. It was just sitting there. Was that there the whole time? Could I have found that the first time if I wanted to? Not entirely sure on the rules. I can't fast travel from here. So we have to get back. So I guess I'll go this way.
was yeah this is where they were originally discovered I think this is how I get back out the other way is that guy still okay down there the surprise inspector that seemed to have no idea what's happening on the island because they're sitting here just with a weird red tape of like they're supposed to be a surprise inspector but they've technically been here before so it wouldn't be registered as a surprise by the computer or something stupid like that. That was weird. You guys all have to respawn. Alright, I guess we'll fight you again. Never anger a man of the cloth. You're not wearing cloth at all. Undergarments at best. You done? I'm just kind of curious. This guy's still alive down here. Eh, he's just hanging out. Much appreciation for your assistance, my friend. May your travels through the aether be free of radiation. Yeah, you might imagine why I sided with the uh, farmer over the random dumb uh, land grab people, especially with how things are about to explode anyway. Turns out, siding with them would have been pretty pointless. Can I just repair here? Okay, sure. Just trying to get my shit going again. Okay. Okay, the centrifuges in my penthouse. I wasn't clear where I was going yet. Uh, going next. And we are back again. Examine the centrifuge. You see a small a small label stuck to the side of the device. Label reads Rizzo's Laboratory Centrifuge. No training required. All Rizzo's laboratory equipment has been designed for the use of unschooled worker. Insert ingredients, push buttons, and watch it spin. Wee! So easy, a spacer's choice worker could use it. Oh my god. Peel back the label. You see another smaller label under that one. It says discontinued model. Spacer's choice pr propriety technology. It is just stolen technology from Spacer's choice, but they talk shit about Spacer's choice users. Pour in the essence of Sprat and Parasite Eggs. In the essence of Sprat smells vaguely like the rest and go on the groundbreaker. Or possibly the cantina in Edgewater. It's, it's difficult to place, but your eyes water all the same. The parasite eggs sink into co concoction, sizzling. You activate the, the centrifuge. The device does its work without any additional input from you. A swirl of bright colors entertains your eyes, and a few moments later you hear a bright chime. All right, disperse it. We need to go to head, head to Phaeton in Pilot House. Let's give it a go. I, I'm happy you're alive. Apparently, if you're real, I forget. Are you a person or are you an AI that just quips? Not altogether clear. This is turning into the loading screen game. Well, here we go again. Whoa! Whoop. Oh, some of you are still alive. By some of you, I think I mean one of you? Yeah. All right. Gives us a discount on Spectrum Brown. Don't drink that. Holy shit. You've learned nothing. We need to put out a PSA. I guess we're about to put a P... A parasitic... Just... <gasps> Horse boy! Save the day. It's you again. Greeting protocols suspended. All non-essential protocols suspended. Phaeton is standing by for larval compound dispersal. 
You're caught up? All right, what's your status? Reactor stable. Compound dispersal may commence. Oh, would I have had to deal with that now if I hadn't dealt with it before? It seems like I would have dispersed this instead. Affirmative. Dispersing. Distillation station. What have you done? What in law's name have you done? You hijacked our atmosphere. Are you trying to kill us all? No. You're trying to kill my symbiotes. I'm not going to let you destroy everything I've built. I can still fix this. I can undo the damage you've done. End of transmission. I like that message. Rizzo's is now off put. They find you off putting because of the. Your behavior is off putting. Uh, character? Reputation, there we go. The board is confused. They still are more positive than negative. I hate them and I can't make them hate me more. The Boris people are not happy with me. Rizzo's is also not happy with me. See, that's a better reaction. These are all over the place, though. Spacer's Choice likes me way too much. Auntie Cleo likes me way too much. I destroyed Gorgon. I guess that they weren't the people that cared about Gorgon anymore, though. Still feels like they should hate me more than they do. Feels to me like a, a weird outcome. TBH. 